Peterson is a student with uh, colon cancer, I think. Um, so college, um, it, this is where we walk for 30 minutes each to raise money for cancer. So college roundup is tomorrow at 7 in the Duggar Gym and guest speaker at 6 in the Artist Theater. Um, his name is Robert Frederick and he wrote a book about college selections that are best suited for students. Um, and then ne and next Wednesday, um, 9th and 11th graders will be taking the PSATs, while 10th graders will be taking PACTs. This is like the first time that we've ever really done this, including 9th and 10th. Um, the six-week grading project progress ends this Friday. This Friday, we have our new biology mentor meeting at lunch, where we have Ms. Hartford pairing 10th graders with freshmen or sophomores with a C or below. This will hopefully help struggling biology students by scheduling weekly meetings during SDL if the student needs assistance. Tyler German is coming next week to work with seniors, while the rest of the students, 9th, 10th, and 11th graders, are taking the AC, uh, PACT or PSAT. Um, our sport report. Our fall sports teams are midway through Orange Coast League play. Our boys and girls cross-country teams both have had their initial league cluster meet at Irvine Regional Park. The girls' team had a dominating performance, placing five runners in the top ten finishers. Our boys' team had a solid third-place finish while resting several runners for a race at Stanford. Both teams had a very successful preseason and are looking forward to Orange Coast League Finals on November 2nd at Irvine Regional Park. Both teams are training hard in preparation for a run together at um, League Championship. Uh, boys' water polo is undefeated in the league play and heads out Thursday to play in the North-South um, Tournament in Palo Alto. Last week, our boys had a thrilling overtime victory at home versus Dana Hills. Girls' volleyball has remained, un remained unbeaten in league play with a strong performance last week against league rival Calvary Chapel on the road. Our girls head to Torrey Pines High School this weekend for their last tournament of the year. This is a tough tournament planned in preparation for the opponents we will see in the CIF playoffs. Boys Beach Volleyball remains undefeated with a convincing victory over Saddleback Valley Christian. The boys continue to improve and represent Laguna Beach High School well. Girls tennis continues to roll in league. They posted four league wins last week and they took a track, um, took tack on three week wins this week. A tough non-league schedule has prepared our girls for Orange Coast League play. Girls golf appears to be on course for the third place league finish. This is a remar remarkable stat considering only one team member had previously golf experience coming onto the season. <laughs> Boys and girls surf posted a st uh, first in school history by defeating St. Clemente High School last week. It was an, um, an awesome team effort and well-deserved. Our boys and girls have been working hard all fall in hopes of winning league championships. Our student athletes continue to excel in the classroom as well as on the playing field. We have several teams with 3.5 plus grade point average. Great, great average. Way to go, breakers. Thank you very much. Okay, well, moving on to our loop of representative media. It's Chloe, that was a great report. That was very good. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, we are focusing in Labufa on the Unified Faculty Association, just like our district is focusing on the us and LBUSD. So I feel like that's a positive start. We wanted to thank our administrators and also the school board for all your help. It's a little chaotic always to start the school year trying to balance. Um, classroom sizes, balance classes, make sure we have all the supports that we need in place, and it's really such a blessing to know that we have the backing of so many that are <coughs> cognizant of all those needs, and so we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Margaret, CSCA. Yes, good evening. The CSEA pre-negotiation survey is now closed. 
And we, as the executive board of CSEA, will be meeting this Friday afternoon to review the survey and use that information to further discuss with roundtables and as we move towards developing a negotiation plan. And that's always a great time for the staff of the executive team to really spend just a couple of hours together and really talk about what the directions are, what we would like to see for all of our members and for the district. And Ms. Phillips mentioned last time that the Boo Grams Boo Raffles, and I don't know if she mentioned about the high school, but they do the children lunch. Um, so we please ask you to support that. Um, that's for the CSEA scholarship funds. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're now down to organizations. Do we have anybody from PTA, school power tonight, or other? No, board members. Jenna. I went to JFMC um, last week sometime. <laughs> um, and as usual, the dean presented information that is always informative and always uh, useful and adds to all the, you know, any, all of our knowledge, and, and actually Margaret made a comment that uh, it, it's unusual that the uh, bargaining units are included in such an in-depth kind of discussion of, of the finances, how they look, where they're going, that sort of thing, and, and, I, and I just think that needs to be mentioned because that is kudos to Dean and your team. That's awesome. And also, I just wanted to, the NGSS presentation just a minute ago was fabulous. I did have to kind of laugh because one of the states adopting um, the standards was Kansas, which also um, outlawed the, uh, for a while, the teaching of um, evolution. So which I just thought that was just such a, an ironic twist right mm -hmm. there. Just threw that out there. Probably I shouldn't have said right that, but I do. So. Huh? Here, they won't be right in place. No, they won't be right in place. Thank God. Anyway, but thank you. That was a great presentation. Okay, Jan. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, it's been kind of quiet. Um, I attended the PT Council meeting. They, they raised this month, and they are, um, they raise phenomenal amounts of money. It's incredible. But they do a lot of, by putting on fun activities. The, the bonanza that he had to add to the world. So, and then I'm um, always ready for the blue glass. And there's a lot of um, time spent in the a lot of volunteer time to get the work, but it's also um, a sense of community. And I did, um, I had thought of it um, before that meeting, hearing the PTA president speak at the back of school nights, and so I wanted to, to pass that on to them. But they were all <coughs> so articulate and made such good presentations at the back of school nights. And it's, it's uh, Maybe they don't think that's part of the job when they take the job on of being PTA president, but I mean, that's some of those big groups to get up and come in and speak. So, and then uh, also complimented Cheryl Coburg on the second new person, new family in the district, coffee, tea, whatever. The event. It was bigger this year, it was really well received, and she divided up into groups so they would meet with the kids in their schools. And, where they were watching Chris's table because they were like, he had them all organized and they were just hanging on every word he was saying. <laughs> but it really is a great opportunity because it's hard to come into a smaller community and to get acclimated. So that's a really nice addition that Coffee Break has made because she's their person for doing that. She let, um, she introduced the different folks there, let them say a couple of words of interest. And again, the parent mentors were there, and I think that's such an uh, exceptional program that we have in this district. And they also all spoke at the back to school nights. And that they, for the parents who have kids that are going to uh, IEPs or who have those issues that they're struggling with, to know they have that support, as I was describing it, I think, to my sister, I said, it's just so that you can call someone up and say how awful the day was. And not, and there's no repercussions, there's no great taking that apart. It's just there as a support of knowing what it's like when it's when your child's struggling or when it's just a hard day. So I think that's oh and after you said JFMC, the because that came out of that nineteen ninety six financial crisis time when we had to do a <coughs> uh, salary reduction, which was painful, I mean really painful and just heart wrenching for those of us who, you know, have no people personally to have to go through that. And that came out of that where our our leaders of our classified and our certificate had said, we want to get in there and we're going to watch the budget because you guys didn't do a good enough job. And so that's that generated that. And I think it's 
I'm glad we're still doing it because I think it's really important to have to share that information and have a solid understanding of the budget and where everything is. It's, it's complicated. And I think I don't think that people realize how complicated school funding is. So thanks to Dean for being here, but it's I mean, that's been a long time. Thank you. Dean? <coughs> it's going to be Carol. Carol and I went to the CSBA conference for two days, and it was excellent. We got so much out of it, and I'm really looking forward to the government <coughs> conference tomorrow and sharing with you some of the things that we learned, but also learning what other districts are doing. It's quite different than what we're doing. The um, I liked both uh, the facilities and the NGSS. I thought those were both great today. <coughs> we, uh, the people who were nominated for CSBA, we, we voted for two out of the three, but they were all good. <laughs> I tried, to, I tried to meet them all. One person I voted for didn't get it, but it doesn't matter because they, I admire those people that they all, that they want to do it. The one that I know the best is Francine Sinto, mm -hmm. who, you know, she also has a home in Laguna, but she's <coughs> been on the board in Tustin forever, and she's so great. If you have questions, she's always available, and she's always up in Sacramento, and she just has a wealth of knowledge that she's willing to share. And um, I'm sorry, I missed last meeting. I was just sick. I should have rather been here. I'm sick. And it was <laughs> sick. We were really good. Yeah. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> and then um, Dee and I did, we went to the Master of Governance. It's our first series of it. We look forward to more Master of Governance. And, um, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. So I don't want to talk about everything, but I was going to pass stuff down to Victoria to maybe give copies so we can have it for tomorrow, because right after we had the Master of Governance, I left with my husband for the first time alone in 16 years um, with our kids, and now I can mm -hmm. I know, and I just got back, so <coughs> I didn't really send all the stuff. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I really was sick, though. That's what my husband's like, I'm so glad you're sick now, and not. <laughs> <laughs> so friendly. Um, but the stuff I'm passing here, so this is policy services, and this is talking about um, CSBA, not that they, they can come in and work with your policy, but something they do is they audit them just to see like what might be out of compliance. It's a small thing. Oh, it had done. We well, you get the piece of paper. You don't have to give everyone a copy of them, but I'll still pass that one down. This other one, which is really cool and it's new, it takes like the calendar and makes the board's calendar. Of <laughs> so it's like, the board's calendar. You know how you see the line? It's like, that was just cruel. You know how you line up? Like, sorry. That's why you need a copy of it. You know how you line up the fact that the calendar around the students? Yeah. Yeah. This line is based on what the board different things do and why it's important to do it at certain times and stuff. And I just, it just had a whole shift, I think, for everyone that saw it. This gives back to policy, and this is about us, what we think about when we look at policy and making it and reviewing and stuff. Because I thought that was so cool. And then this was lawyers love this, and people would love to people who want to copy of it. But um, it's about like what's mandated and what's conditionally mandated in the different policies, just to make sure that we have them and they're right as the kids start. I love you know, this. <laughs> that's what I know. I know. I want you to read and it's not over, guys. And then this was an explanation, and I know you guys can't tell this from the end. But this is an explanation of what school boards do, and it's the eight functions of it. We were number eight, so it was fun because we were this, which is everything. Um, so she just gets to stay up there, kiddo. Um, but it really talks about like all the components, and they really kept bringing it down to like cars and how they're not all working. You know, your car still might get you there, but when the official of the car doesn't run, and so that was fascinating. It's a neat visual, and I like visuals. And then for those who don't like visuals, it's kind of picked up. And then I thought the thing that was most fascinating in it is of all the things we did, and um, and I know the lighthouse um, Victoria is on the example. The lighthouse is on the website. They printed us a copy of it, but I thought this was great for us to read because it actually talked about how we set policy and govern really affects the classroom, like directly the, the direct effect. And when it's running, when the school board runs really well, the increase in predictive um, student achievement and productivity and 
the family feel, the whole thing, and but they could tie it back to science, right? So that so I'll say about but I wrote all of those ones. If you don't mind buying off a copy and and then the one that follows that was the foundation of effective studies a little better because then it talks about the study. But maybe we could all share that and so I'm sure. Not that you guys are gonna read it tonight, so you won't have it for long or a while. Because it was fascinating to see and I know Jay, I know you guys might know how you affect schools, but maybe still being so they like the fact that they're talking about a policy and how it really does and breaking down the policy and how it really affects direction and achievement. Was was wonderful, to, to, I don't yeah, tracing it all back to how it begins. <coughs> yeah, and the part right. about the budget and tracing that all back. To Sorry, you guys talked about that. And how that makes everyone feel secure and we're right. Well, the overall feeling, but the fact that they can, they spent all these years to trace this and you know do the study comes is awesome. And they're working on the second part of the study. So. Thank you. And, and oh, I absolutely love the study session. Oh, it's great. Great. Great job. Okay, so I just a few brief comments. I uh, want to thank Dr. Depot for the uh, uh, presentation and Jeff for his opportunities. The only thing I will comment is I wish more people had been able to see it. Yeah. It was a great, two great presentations, mm -hmm. and there are uh, critical challenges in science, and we've got some very big issues coming up in the future. <laughs> <laughs> In facilities, we've got some questions to come up to. Yeah, and, uh, yes. was, I think it was well publicized. <coughs> so it's, that's, that's the issue you always face. Well, it's tough. And then yeah, timing might be tough for some of the parents because we, we did it relatively early. There's never a way to get it perfect. Right. Um, but I did get feedback that there's also the school power calling it. There are other things. There are other, I mean, everyone always says yeah, there's, there's all some conflicts that if I want to come, like the <coughs> emails, like, I want to come. I just can't figure out how to make it work. So I thought that was a nice, it means it was publicized well. Right, that they knew. Yeah, I thought it was. I knew it was. So anyway, it was great, and I appreciate you guys' work on that. Um, I did go to the Russian Palette and Seventh Annual Concert. We <laughs> also know Mr. Herschel was there. Yes. Well, for all of you who missed it, <laughs> I think it has two functions. Number one, it raises money for the Russian Palette, which is gives them the ability to get independent so they can shield themselves from the principal. <laughs> um, but it also is a showcase for student talent. And they use all student talent. And it may not be your cup of tea, but it's actually kind of fun. And it gives our students a chance to perform. So that was, that was a lot of fun. I did go to the Friday night football game, and it was nice to see the new field, and everything was there. And it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. And that is a continuing community event that is more than just a football game. It becomes a Friday night lights area in Laguna, and it's part of the culture. It's, 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 it's a great event. and. Uh, it's for itself. Lastly, I didn't go to the candidate forum. I won't go back into that too much, but the only comment I'll say is, again, there are 24,000 people in Laguna Beach, and there were maybe 60 people, I don't know, something like that. So, <laughs> you know, it's it just fascinating to me that uh, there wasn't more. I realized there was a candidate forum for city council that night. There was some other kind of event that went on. Remember that? I think there was another type of something else. I think it was just a student. Was it two? Okay. Anyway, so... Uh, it was it was interesting and it was what it was. Is there only one that would be one? That's it. That's it. Okay. Come November one we'll talk. Um, that's it for me. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> since last meeting, um, Irene, Amy, Lila, Alicia, myself went to the uh, mental health conference. It's actually a national conference that happened to be in San Diego, um, which is perfect timing as we talk about our social and emotional support for our students. So. Um, I think we all learned a lot, had an opportunity to hear what other uh, states are doing and other districts are doing related to kind of some larger scale grants that they have with the U.S. Department of Education and um, SAMHSA and uh, many different uh, organizations. And so we were able to kind of listen and hear what's working, what's not necessarily working, um, and just had an opportunity to hear models of uh, interventions and systems for students. So. I know that Alicia and Irene and, and the rest of the team will have another follow-up meeting to kind of debrief, um, I believe it's this week actually, um, as we kind of think about, okay, so what are the next steps that we're going to take to support our students? So um, some of the, the topics included kind of PBIS and how that inter, uh, intersects with our social emotional support systems, uh, universal screeners for students, so how we identify students, 
early on prior to uh, the learning <coughs> behaviors that um, could put them at risk or put them out of school for any length of time. And uh, lastly, it was, I was impressed, Irvine Unified School District actually had uh, a representative there presenting on their new mental health model that they've just kind of rolled out in the last uh, couple of years. And so I had an opportunity to speak with uh, the person who was in charge of that, <coughs> get feedback and uh, her, what successes they've had, and things that she would have done differently if she was to start over now as well. So again, great learning experience. I was appreciative that um, Irene, uh, Alicia, Amy, and Lila were able to spend that time. And we had uh, a good opportunity again to just talk after the sessions as well. So um, always fun to hang out with, with them. Um, I did a visit to a couple different schools this week. I, um, last week. I was really impressed. I went to Thurston to, to watch their uh, their student-run talks, and the library, or the media center, was just full of kids uh, there to listen to their peers talk to them about uh, a couple different topics. And that's hard to do when you're a uh, middle school student standing up in front of a group of uh, 45 to 50 of your peers. I think their speech uh, speed sped up. <laughs> really fast, and they were done much quicker than I think they had intended, um, just uh, for the fact that they were nervous. Overall, just so impressed to see the students doing that, and I'm uh, thankful that Jenny has been able to fill that into her schedule as well. I did visit Scott Woodcock's class this afternoon, or this afternoon, and I walk in, and Scott's sitting there, and the students are presenting on how to fix, uh, essentially, the table, like our table's here not using screws, but designing it on the computer in teams. And then they had to present why their model was more efficient or more effective and would be more durable than the other models that everyone had. And then as they all discussed, they identified different components of each model that would have served it better. So there was two models that had pegs and a combination of some other pieces to it. And then it combines the teams and says, OK, now take what we know and make it better and enhance it, and then we're going to print it and see how it actually works on the 3D printer. That is really hands-on learning. Students sitting on the floor building things. Uh, that, uh, Scott has just a great uh, mannerism as well, sort of asking the questions and making the students really responsible for their own learning. So uh, just a great opportunity the last couple weeks to get in and out of some classrooms just to see stuff like that. It's, uh, makes me smile and makes me enjoy doing the work I need to do. So. And other than that, I'll pass it off to the other county members. Dean, you uh, Maybe just to highlight the, uh, what we just did the facility study session, is that we still have up on our website, if you go into the uh, departments and under <coughs> the facilities, uh, there is a continuous survey that, that we were able to download the data that comes through there at either one, uh, if you have a recommendation that some facility improvement that you would, you, you think would be an enhancement to, to, the, to the school, the idea can be posted there. Uh, and second, if there's a maintenance need, if there's something that's not being repaired, something that doesn't look right, that, that can be listed there as well. So, and that's whether you're a student, whether you're a parent, whether you're a community member, it doesn't matter who, it's right there on our website. It's always available, it's been there for two years. It was a great uh, feedback we got in our first master plan uh, not as much participation, maybe because it was as much advertisement the second time around. So we just want to make sure that people know that's out there. It will continually be out there so that we kind of uh, identify <coughs> needs that may not come through a traditional route. Uh, but it's just something that somebody sees and notices. Okay. So uh, I continue to meet with teachers, and that is just um, a tremendous gift for me. Um, but uh, we're beginning to sort out our NG, our MTSS, so our larger plan around intervention and supporting students um, beyond just academics, but um, we're working to align our elementaries, and then we'll grow our larger K-12 group around um, multi-tiered um, systems of support for students, so we're in the midst of that. Um, also, um, I do want to thank Dustin and Steve. I would be remiss if I did not thank my partners in crime this evening. That was great. But um, I, I thanks as due as a parent, I got to attend the, the new parent tea with my husband. So thank you um, to our PT for hosting that. Um, and a final reminder that the Great American Shakeout is October 20th. So we should be addressing all of those little mini swarms we keep hearing about. 
So um, last week I attended the Exa Personnel Institute, which is an annual conference, and it, it's always a good opportunity to get updated on the new legislation that impacts personnel-related um, policies. And it never fails that the week that they have it, there's always a major law change. So it's a really good opportunity to um, spend some time hearing from attorneys, actually get opportunity to get free legal advice. <laughs> um, so, uh, but there are also other sessions on um, other topics. Um, a couple of interesting ones uh, was one on crisis communication. And it really, uh, you probably saw Terrilyn at CSBA at, at some point, um, but this one was focused more on personnel related issues or um, we had the whole the creepy clown phenomenon going on at that time. So we talked a little bit about that. Um, and then finally, um, I went to a session on innovative teacher evaluations. So it's interesting to see what other districts have, are doing to address, there been, there's been recent litigation in that area, but also, um, just, you know, best practice, what's valuable, meaningful evaluation tools. Um, so those were all um, interesting <coughs> sessions. And then um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that Launchpad is up and rolling, I think I mentioned last time. We've already issued 50 micro-credentials to our classified staff. So there's been a very <coughs> good, um, strong interest in that program, and we'll continue to refine and develop the opportunities that we have available. Um, but so far, it's going really well. Much. All right. Then that moves us down to number 10, which is our consent calendar. Are there any items that anyone on the board would like to pull for our consent calendar? Any others? Okay. Jenny, pull. Staff would like to pull 10. C. Number 4. Not four. Yeah. All right. And I have a motion to approve consent items 10A. D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and item C, except for subsection 7, 4, 4, right? Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, then Jan, you want to, uh, you want to address P or you just want to put it? I want to abstain on section 3. Section 3. Is that it? Yes. Okay, uh, so we did a separate motion. Mm -hmm. I have, can I have a motion to approve 10 B? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Section 3 only. Now, uh, we have a C, a particular way. Section four. So uh, section four. Who pulled that? Yeah. Yeah. And do you want to comment on that? Or? Okay. So we're just pulling that. We're not going to. Okay. That moves us to. Uh, well, we probably need to approve the rest of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Motion to. Well, didn't we do approval? He did. He did. Did he? Yeah. I thought I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You approved it all. Yeah. With the exception. Then I was just saying the wrong time. I was still stuck. I did that first. Oh, I was still stuck on her. Sorry. <laughs> Are we good? We did it right? Yes. Okay, then we're going to move to number 11. I uh, believe Dr. Dr. Lori has a motion. So, this is our motion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the last board meeting, uh, the board expressed uh, interest in um, having a formal action to. Back the city council's decision to approve the formal resolution closing the ballot measure campaign. So it is simply before you to, to take action to support the city council's decision. So second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's on Monday, 24th, 2016, at 6 p.m. Uh, at the district office. We have a special, the, a special uh, governance meeting tomorrow, starting at 8 a.m.